Let's give him another hand, shall we? <clears throat> so you have to hang out for the whole morning. We're going to have a great day here this morning and then this afternoon with the concert. My name is Reverend Alice Reed, and I'm so happy to be here with you today. At uh, So aloha, right? Aloha. Aloha. Now let me look around. Did, did everybody get laid this morning? Did you get your lay? <laughs> If you, if you did it, I know that Ray will ha be happy to lay you. So <laughs> I don't know what you're laughing about. <laughs> I don't understand at all. Oh, boy. So here we are. We're in week four of our uh, Love Ripples Outward program where we've been talking about paradox all month. We've been... Um, Having our adventure in faith. And uh, an adventure in faith is a program that I'm sure this community, like many communities around the country, do every year this time. It's an opportunity for us to dive deep. It's an opportunity for us to do some programming that might support you as you <clears throat> might be looking for some kind of a shift or a change in your life. And um, I know that for me this year, our Adventures of Faith has been um, meaningful. It really has. It's, it's cracked me open in ways I didn't expect, and it's moved energy within me. And so um, I don't, so those of you that joined us, we, we had workshops after our gathering every Sunday. And so the first Sunday, we did something called the Fear to Faith, and that practice is really a practice of looking at those places where we might have allowed fear to become an obstacle in the things that we wanted to experience in life. And so the fear to faith process, excuse me, <clears throat> the fear to faith process um, really takes us through a b <laughs> unexpected and amazing practice that shows us where our wires might get crossed and then we do a spiritual practice to to heal those unhealed places. And in the second week, we had a town hall meeting. And in the town hall meeting, we, we looked at as a community, because that's been the, the, uh, the vantage point, if you will, as we've been practicing this Adventures in Faith. We looked, we did a town hall meeting. We, we looked at where we've been as a community. We looked at where we are now. And then uh, we were all invited to begin to think about the things that we really valued about our community and the things that might be obstacles to those values. And it was a very well attended meeting and the energy was, was great as people were really engaged and invested. And then last week, after service, we did a visioning practice. And the visioning, if you're not familiar with it, is a little different than creating a, a vision statement. It's a little different than um, uh, maybe uh, visualization. Visioning is a process where we really engage our imagination and our higher wisdom self to um, capture what is God's highest idea for this center. And so we had a lot of people who practiced that with us as well. And so it's been, it's been really um, powerful for me to walk alongside you as we've been doing these different practices. And, and what I've noticed is that as we have been moving through this practice, we have been in this, shall I say, paradoxical space where we know change is needed, but we don't necessarily know what that change needs to be. We've been operating in what I call the liminal space, the place of the unknown. And what I have learned after my years of spiritual practice is that it's oftentimes that space in the unknown where something, some idea, some situation, some circumstance that is bigger than I could have conceived of myself comes forward. I dare say that we are actually in really good company as we occupy this in-between space of looking at who we are and who, who we were and who we hope to become because it feels like the world is 
trying to figure that out as well as we look at systems that are breaking down and, and processes that used to work like clockwork. I mean, how many speakers of the house did we have? Like, <laughs> like things are shifting. And if you're like me, it's, it's not a real comfortable place to be oftentimes when we're, when we're watching things change. The ground beneath our feet seems to be moving. But I also know it's those, these times when we move into that that we allow ourselves to, to experience something that maybe we wouldn't have conceived of ourselves. And I know that as we've moved through the weeks, and we've been looking at our community and we've been looking at the, the different uh, potentialities that we have for this community. There are so, some of you have come up to me or communicated to me in one form or another like, just, just lead, Alice. Just tell us what to do and we'll do it. But I, I can't do that. And the reason I can't do that is because that would be me pre preempting God. That would be me not really holding the space in the container so that God can communicate through us, through grace, what is ours to do next. And one of the things that I shared with you last week briefly was this model called, for consciousness called Kingdoms of Consciousness, and I want to share that with you. I'm going the right direction? Yes. Kingdoms of Consciousness, and, and I, I'm going to speak to it a little, a little more in depth because it's a model for us to understand how we move with spirit, how we move into that place where we can really be the, the, um, the expression of God in our life and how we can be the expression of God in the center or how we need to be the expression of God in the world at large. And so before I talk about this little uh, model for you, I want to I wanna first ground us in this idea that we do teach that there's only one, one consciousness, one beingness, and that we are all individuated ex uh, expressions of that one. And so when I talk about these kingdoms of consciousness, it's, it's not really hierarchical because I can be in kingdom one and then kingdom four within a few hours, sometimes like that. And the idea when we look at this model is to begin to locate and recognize ourselves when we are experiencing something. And so the first kingdom is the kingdom where we often experience life as happening to us, whether it's um, whether we're feeling victimized or, or maybe we're, not, we're feeling powerless. The, the first kingdom has this characteristic and this nature of fear that can often... Um, dare I say, infect us. <laughs> I don't know about you, but when, when I'm full of fear, I'm really not at my best. <laughs> I'm not making good decisions. I'm not really hearing people for what they're saying. And so this first kingdom is a kingdom that I think we're all familiar with. I know I am. Um, we move into that second kingdom of consciousness, which is, and is the place where we begin to feel empowered. And so... The, that empowerment is really that, that place where we feel like life is happening by us. We're movers and shakers. We're, we're making really good decisions. We're, we've got lots of great ideas, and we're feeling empowered by them. It's a really wonderful place to be. In. And, you know, when I think of that um, beautiful quote from Ernest Holmes, that there's a power for good in the universe greater than we are and we can use it. That's second kingdom. It's, a, it's an amazing place to begin to understand that we're working with a power greater than ourselves that is, that is allowing us to use our gifts and our talents to make the world a better place when we're at the top of our game. And in there, the, the nature and characteristic that I often experience in kingdom two is fixing. I'm fixing things. I'm I'm making things right. I'm, I'm being used for the betterment of the people that, that I'm influencing. And it's, like I said, it's a very powerful place to be. Kingdom three, kingdom three is when we, we drop in through 
surrender to that mystical place where God moves through us. You might have had an, uh, an experience of that, an, a spiritual experience, or perhaps just that experience of really being in the zone when you're doing something, you're talking to someone, you're, you're singing, or you're, you're doing some kind of expression, some art of yours, and you don't really recognize, it's like time kind of dissolves. Right, so Kingdom 3 is that place of through me. And it's the place where we trust, we have faith, and follow through. And the follow through for me is grounded in spirit as opposed to just my good ideas. It, it's oftentimes the, the uh, actions or uh, the th things that I'm working through look similar in Kingdom 2 and Kingdom 3, but in Kingdom 3 I've dropped into uh, a more the word I have on the slide is unitive. The characteristics of kingdom one and kingdom two is there's still some, there's still some othering, even if it's othering where I'm really trying to do good in the world and help somebody. I'm seeing them as outside of myself. But when I drop into kingdom three, that's when I begin to have a more unitive experience with the divine, where I know I'm being used and so that I turn that quote around that I, that I shared with you in Kingdom 2 of there is a power for good in the universe greater than we are and it can use us. And it can use us. The differences are really subtle. But at the same time, what I'll tell you is often there will be wonderful things that happen in my life when I'm in a King 3 experience. And um, I can't really honestly lay claim to them. <laughs> it's like something, you know, doors open, the right people call. I'm in the right place at the right time. It's a, it's a powerful place to, to live and to operate from. But it gets a little confusing because we live in a culture that really, you know, it really, we respect planning, strategizing, cultivating, and all of those things are necessary and important. But when, I'm, but when I'm in King 3, I'm usually something, I'm usually available to spirit in a way that transcends who I am and my best ideas. Does that make sense? Yeah. Kingdom 4, Kingdom 4 is the kingdom where we have the experiences as me. I would say the, the models for me and that have really lived from Kingdom 4 are the master teacher Jesus or Buddha, the Muhammad, the people who have individuals, light workers, that have really surrendered their whole self so that they don't know where the divine starts or ends or where they begin. And so I, I wanted to lay this model out for you as we looked at this Adventures in Faith because all the activities that we've been doing all along for the whole month have really worked us through the kingdoms. We did the fear of the faith in the week one. That was kingdom one. That was the opportunity for us to really look at the places where we might be carrying fear and to release that. In week two, when we did our town hall meeting, that was a kingdom two experience. It was engaging and embracing your best ideas as they came forward. And then we dropped into kingdom three with our visioning practice so that we could begin to open ourselves to a a bigger idea for ourselves individually and for the community. And all of that will coalesce into some expression. And we don't really know what that expression is just yet. We have some good ideas. We have some, we, you know, your finance committee meets and they talk about some ideas and the board is taking some actions. But we're holding this container in a kind of kingdom three corral, if you will, so that we can be open to what is the highest idea for God to express itself in our community. So that we can move through whatever changes want to happen. And we know changes are, are up for this community. And so we look at those changes and when we look at it in this framework, I don't know about you, but it gives me a great deal of comfort 
that it's okay for me not to know exactly how things are going to be played out. And <clears throat> my job, and I invite you as uh, individuals, your job is to hold for yourself this highest idea, this openness and this container for how God wants to express by means of us. I think it's, I'm, I'm, I'm excited, I'm a little exhausted all at the same time <laughs> because, um, you know, change management. I don't know, it's not, it's not so easy. Um, let's see. I think that um, there's wisdom in all four of these kingdoms, and I, and I think when we stay open and we can uh, use our own powers of self-awareness to recognize what kingdom we might be working from as we're building consciousness, that, that, that's perfect. You do not need to be the master of circumstances. <laughs> you do not have to figure everything out. What we do have to do is trust that there is a power in the universe, I like to call it the thing that makes the grass grow. I don't care what, where you've come up, atheist, Catholic, Jewish, Buddhist, all of us recognize that there is an energy, some kind of energetic flow that is moving through the earth that makes the grass grow. Or the cactus bloom as the case may be. <laughs> we have a lot of grass here in Southern California. <laughs> what I can tell you is that when I, when I keep this model for myself in front of me, and when I can raise my self-awareness to it, and when I can consciously and intentionally choose to want to live from a kingdom three place, because frankly, I, I, you know, when I think about the spiritual giants who live in kingdom four, you know, I'm grateful when I can touch the hem. But when I can honestly choose to have faith and then to follow through from, from a place that is faith-driven where I, despite feeling, how I'd like to put it, grounded in midair, I know there are things that come forward for me, ideas come forward, or I meet somebody, or I start talking to somebody. Those are the things that I'm here to tell you. Can I have a witness? Because I have experiences that were beyond anything I could have figured out on my own. Anything I could have figured out on my own. When I have that radical reliance on my faith and I trust that thing that makes the grass grow is the same thing that breathes my body and beats my heart and helps me when I, when I have an intention brings me into the right situations for those intentions to unfold. It's a really powerful model that can help us to, to really drop into a, f a, a place of faith and trust. And, and what I know is that uh, we are always operating on faith and trust. <laughs> that that even when we think we know, right? Even when we think we know. I did a fun thing with the, the, the kingdoms of consciousness with this idea of, you know, you don't know in kingdom one. You think you know in kingdom two. You, you begin to, you, then in kingdom three, you don't know that you, you know that you don't know. <laughs> and then in kingdom four, you know. <laughs> and you really know. <laughs> um, but as we move through change in this community, as we wrap up this adventures in faith, as we, as we hold tight being open to the unknown and embracing it for all that it, the potentiality that it has for us, I know that we will continue to thrive as a community. When we looked at our values, the things you valued the most was a safe place to have friendships and colleagues, people who would walk by your side as you walk through. Um, on your own spiritual path. I have a very strong and high value that we are better together. And you prove that to me all the time. And as we sort of finish up this idea of paradoxes, I know that we're paradoxically, we're going to meet our goals for our pledge drive because even though half of you haven't filled out your cards, 
<laughs> we're still celebrating. We're celebrating today with a wonderful concert. We're celebrating knowing that our needs will get met because we are indeed doing God's work here. And God's work shows up as our, as our prayer ministry. God's shows, work shows up as our education ministry. It shows up as our, as our um, camera and sound ministry that brings uh, this these talks out to the people who can't make it here on Sunday. It shows up through our practitioners. It shows up through our hospitality. It shows up through our animal kinship ministry. I've got to take a breath. <laughs> we are indeed doing God's work here. And I'm confident. And I absolutely know it is told in the principles that we teach that God always supports its work. So I'm very grateful for each one of you that have come here this morning to celebrate, to celebrate the good work that God is doing as this center, the good work that God is doing as our beautiful, new, beautiful musicians who are going to be doing concert for Maui Relief, that God is always supporting us if we open ourselves to it. Thank you very much. So let's pray. Once again, I lower my gaze and open my heart, trusting that the power and the presence, the, the very power that has the earth revolve around the sun is the same power that is coursing through my veins, that there is a unification of that one life, that one power, that it wants to experience life through me, and that as I raise my awareness to it, I recognize that it is a power with, that I am empowered by, and that spirit expresses itself in a unique and perfect way as me and as each one here, and as each one within the sound of my voice. So we accept that. We accept that power. We accept that love. We accept that grace. And we trust that even though things may look like they're changing, the one thing that stays the same is the love of the Creator for its creation. And so we accept that blessing right here and right now, knowing that we are blessed, that we are carried when we need to be carried, and that we carry others when we need to carry them, and that all of this is the work of the one divine intelligence as it moves in, as, and through each one. So I give great thanks for this. I let it go. I let it be. And if you agree with me, please say, and so it is. Thank you. And now